Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We are here this morning to hear God's word as it is prepared for us, including me who is studying here. So uh, be ready, be expectant. Just as we are studying like that, I want us to read the scripture in the book of John. Scripture in the book of John, chapter number five, from verse two up to eight. John chapter number five, verse number two, and we'll be reading up to eight. Now there was in Jerusalem the, by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Now there, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, let's go to number three. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity that eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Verse number eight, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Father, we bless you for the reading of the word that even as we hear that which you have to say to us through this portion of the scripture, may we receive the revelation. Because, Father, these are logos, but we need rema, O oh God, that as we share this message, let your Holy Spirit minister to each and every one of us. Receive every glory, receive every honor. In Jesus' name we pray. We may have our seats. Amen. I want us to share uh, the word of God this morning. But before that, I want to introduce myself and say I'm Zachary Moravi Guni, and I am married to Catherine Wanjiro Moravi, and we have four daughters. Um, I also want to appreciate God for yet giving us an opportunity to share the word. I know there was a first service, second service, and yet again, we are at this table being served also. Also honoring our parents in the house, Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Alice, we really honor you and appreciate you as our parents. Now, out of this scripture, uh, I want us to share something uh, about when an opportunity presents itself. Just for reference purposes, it is good to have maybe a title whereby when you are referring to this message later on, you can connect it to something. But you can name it the way you will understand. But for reference purposes, when an opportunity presents itself. So basically, in life, opportunities are not many. And uh, when I was looking at um, the description, a simple description of the word opportunity, I saw that uh, a time or set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. Time or set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. So that time and set of circumstances may not always be there. It appears once and in a very scattered way, sparsely uh, uh, distributed. So, many opportunities are not many. And now that they are not many, or they are rare, whenever they present themselves, because they are rare, anything rare is always waited for by so many people. Whenever an opportunity presents itself, then you realize that there are so many people who are on the wait. You know, like we cannot afford to lose what is not ours, or rather what is ours, because even if we miss it and it is ours, other people will be waiting for the same. So, opportunity is very, very key, and whenever it presents itself, then we should be ready. So it therefore demands that we stay prepared, we stay ready, we stay uh, sober, we stay alert, such that when that opportunity comes, because I also realized uh, not all opportunities allow us. But that which is yours, by the time it comes, 
it is important that you be ready. You be sober. You be alert. Because it can always bypass you. So this is always happening around us and within us. And opportunities are everywhere. But we, as we relate with the scripture, as we have read in the, in the book of the John, the gospel according to St. John, that there was a situation here. But yet before we get into that, about opportunity is that more so as believers, I was now looking at a general picture whereby everyone in the world is looking for an opportunity. Everyone in the world is open to an opportunity whereby we are supposed to be alert. But now more so as believers, who, those of us who are of the household of faith, that we should be more in the forefront because it determines our well-being, our opportunities. When you get your opportunity and get use of it, it determines our well-being. It also determines our advancement. It also determines our progress. You know, progress is like moving from one position to another on an issue you are doing. Even growth is a, 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 a progress that you are two years, you are three years, but you find that as you continue growing, certain things are happening and they are changing. So as believers, as people who are of household of faith, even as the other people in the world are also waiting for the opportunity, for us, we need to be very, very much on the forefront. We need to be more alert than the world. We need to be more sober than the world. We need to be so, uh, you know, so our eyes are supposed to be more open than the people in the world. So enemies, enemies of our opportunity, it has a huge, huge impact upon our lives. That opportunity that was supposed to come to you, but then you don't get it for one reason or another. Being a worldly person, being a believer, if something was meant for you, but then it bypasses you, then I can assure you, or rather I can guarantee you, the impact will be so, so much. And sometimes I think those opportunities created for believers, when we miss them, they have a more huge impact than the world. You know, sometimes I see people in the world, it's like they have all time and they have all what they want. You find someone is like, um, someone has something so good, let's say, for instance, like a vehicle. But you as a believer, before you even reach that point of owning that vehicle, it is such a process. I don't know whether you are telling each other. But for people in the world, they have, they lose it, they get another one. So you can realize uh, our opportunity and the opportunity outside there, you can't compare them. They are not the same. So for us believers, we need to be very, very keen that let our opportunity not pass us because the impact is so huge. If God wanted you to take a certain line, probably let's think in the ministry, and then you miss that opportunity, meaning that the people you are supposed to reach out and the people you are supposed to connect with so that their lives can change, and then they can also change other people's lives, the entire of that process is corrupted. Why? Because we have missed our opportunity. So we have a lesson here, and we need to be very keen and see that we are working with what God is directing us to do in terms of opportunities in our life. Opportunities present themselves in many forms and in many shapes in our walk of life. There are the determinant, just like I've explained. When they present themselves in many forms, in many shapes, they again become the determinant, or rather the determining factor of the difference we make in life. So, losing opportunity, not making difference. Getting the opportunity, making difference. So when you see someone outside there, some mutu anaka tu amepoteza direction na hata anjui mahali anaenda na mwingine ambaye ameendelea sana na mambo yake inaonekana inaenda vizuri the difference is the opportunity bwana asifiwe amen see opportunity yeah the difference is the opportunity what the impact you will cause in your lifetime in your generation in your family lineage the difference is how we use our opportunities whether we get them or we don't get them bwana asifiwe so, unfortunately, many of us are always going, are always on the go for one, 
but we miss the same unknowingly. This is something I would want uh, maybe to share with you, that note that all the time we are aware that we are losing our opportunities. Sometimes we lose them unknowingly. Because of the circumstances and the situations around us, the, the, the opportunity has presented itself, but instead of us getting into the opportunity and flowing with it, then we find that we are not maybe at the right place at the right time, we are not doing the right thing at the right time, because of maybe some kind of confusion in life, so we find that we are unknowingly losing our opportunity. So what this does is that it creates a cycle. When we, when we miss our opportunities unknowingly, unfortunately most of the time, many people miss the opportunities unknowingly. Ningumu sana mtu aseme, nitaka hapa sasa, hii opportunity inipite. We are always trying. But because of some unseen things, we find that unknowingly we have missed it. So this, what, this happen, what this causes is that it causes a cycle, you know, a perpetual cycle of people who are in need and the needs are not being met. I don't know whether you know that regardless of how much money you have and uh, how much you are educated and whatever kind of family, ground, family background you come from, there are situations in life whereby it's only Jesus who will get you out of it. Are we in agreement, brethren? And this is now, Jesus will bring an opportunity to bring you out of that situation. But then you can imagine when it, you, you miss the opportunity. What that one does is that you keep on being needy or people who are in need repeatedly, repeatedly. So utapata hata kama ni maombi tunaomba, you find that we have prayer requests which never disappear from our list. Why? Because opportunities have come and they have passed. So it is added to the other uh, list of prayers. So in a skumwa, unapata in a skumwa hata miakambili. But then when you look at the, the things happening around, maybe you realize that opportunities came and left. And brethren, this is not a very good situation to be in, isn't it? No one would want to have something carried forward, carried forward, knowingly or unknowingly. We need solutions in life, and that is what we are looking for. So even as we look at this scripture, I want to make reference to this scripture. This is a, a story of Jesus on a mission. Because Jesus' work was a mission, on a, on a mission. He would wake up, get into the villages, get into places, travel through the sea, going to minister to people in the far places. So in this scripture, we are seeing a man who was sick. And we are not told specifically where he was sick. But in the scripture we are told, some were lame, some were paralyzed, you know, and uh, some were blind. So these are the three conditions we've been given. But we are told that a multitude of people used to be at that uh, pool called the Sheep Gate. And basically they were there for one goal, to be healed. So this particular man, we are not even told his name. The objective and the goal of this man, it was to get well. Hata kama kuna vitu zingine alitaka zifanyike hapo katikati, that was secondary. But his primary purpose and main goal was to get well. So, uh, now, when, when you look at the scripture and you read it in between the lines, eh, you realize that the reason why this man was not getting well is because, not that the pool was not healing people, not what was bringing the healing was not there, but the man could not get to move from where he was to get into the pool at the right time. We are probably not told whether he was either blind, lame, or paralyzed. But we just know that he was in infirmity. But we would imagine one of the, one of the three. Let us imagine he was blind. So whenever the angel could come and stir the water, a blind person, moving within the multitude of so many people, getting into one kasako ivi, aingie ndani, simunona ikazi. Yeah, so probably that's why he was missing the opportunity. Let again assume that he was lame. Lame is someone who has difficulty in walking, isn't it? Before a checheme, you know, niku chechemea. Before a checheme, iyo gozua. By the time anafika pare, washa kuwa healed and actually they are coming back. That is what I'm imagining. Anapata washa ingia, anakutana wakitoka, na manji isha lose the healing power. Let's assume maybe he, he was paralyzed. Paralysis is whereby you, your body is not coordinated. So before a bear boy, before I end the power position, the angel has already left. So I'm imagining either 
of those situations befell him. That is why he has been there. So his focus was for the 38 years. His focus was to get into the pool. But you see, brethren, it took 38 good years to get into that pool. That eight good years. And you know, that eight years is not a small period of time. That is a long time. Bwana asifiwe. Mtoto amezaliwa, ameenda primary, ameenda secondary, ameolewa, ameanza kazi. And it is a long, long process. But realize, within those that eight years, he could not find his position and get into the pool. Now, let us come to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Immediately, Jesus came into the scene. He knew even before the man talked. Even before he asked him, what do you want, or rather, do you want to be made well? Jesus asked this question just as a formality. You know, the way you would not imagine some, someone automatically needs this. You, Jesus had to, like, refer him to what he has been requiring for all those years. Remember, this man has been there seeing things happen for that eight years. So when Jesus appears, even at the kulisa iswali, analinganisha iswali la yesu, na ile hali ya meona miaka na nane. So you can also not blame this man, Baneso Asifiwe. He was maybe thinking Jesus is one among many people who are trying to come there to help him to get into the pool. I'm even imagining there are many people who are trying to do that. But somehow, somewhat, it, it never happened. So Jesus knew this. But when this man listened to this question, he did not see an opportunity. When Jesus asked him, maybe we can get into verse number, I don't know whether that's, that, that's verse number, verse number seven. Wakati Yesu alimuuliza swali, huyu mtu kwa sababu ya zile hadhi zilizokuwa zimemzunguka, hakusikia hiyo swali venye inafaa kusikizwa, alisikia kitu kingine. When Jesus saw him lying there, I knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. He said to him, "Do you want to be made well?" Now, when you look at that question, that is a very direct question. Saizi Pastor James Let's see, I'm just giving you an example because you are my friend. If there has been an issue you've been wanting God to come through for you, maybe let's say like finances, Nikulize, James Unataka Pesa. Isn't that a very direct question? Direct question. When you see this man being asked, do you want to be made well? It is not like he was supposed to start second guessing, am I sick? Am I not sick? Have I been here? Have I not been here? We are told he has been there for how many years? That eight years. Now, here is a direct question. Unataka kupata uponyaji. But see what this man says. Instead of answering the question, he gets into narratives. Um, the sick man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another man steps down for me. Anasema kwamba, wakati anaenda kuingia, mwingina naingia kwa niyamba yake. You see, uh, this man being there for that eight years, Jesus wanted him out of that place. But when this man was asked the question, he thought now Jesus will come and get in the system of trying to look for people, carry him and put him into the pool, not knowing that this was a different approach altogether. It isn't recorded in that scripture, but I am imagining the many lame, the many paralyzed, the many blind who are surrounding the, 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 the pool or the, the, that well, they were also jostling for God's attention. They were, they were asking Jesus, they were, they were maybe trying to find an opportunity also for Jesus to attend to them. So you can imagine when this man does not answer the question, direct as is supposed to be answered, and then there are so many people up there who are jostling for, God's, for Jesus' attention, you see that Jesus did not have all the time to listen to this man. One else was feeling. And brethren, I want us to, that if Spirit of God could help us understand what was happening here, when Jesus was asking this man, do you want to be made well? Instead of the man saying yes, because that question did not require a lot of words. It just required dio. One else was feeling. We are just supposed to say dio. One else was feeling. But now see what is happening, brethren. Instead of the man answering, he starts giving stories. 
What a, what a, what a sad situation. He started giving, and imagine this man, for that eight years, he has been going through, the, you know, through this well. So I would have imagined he should have been the first person, seeing how there are many people competing for Jesus' attention. And he has been there for so long. Probably I'm thinking he was the oldest on that well. Maybe hata watu walikuwa memjua, walikuwa memzoea, hata lambda walikuwa naita hicho kisima, kisima sa yule, cha yule njama, buwana yesu asifiwe. How we get a circumstances and situations in our lives until people identify us with those situations. Watu anasema yule mtu wa ile kitu. But Jesus knew this. So just for us, I want us to look at how then do we get out of these situations of missing our opportunities repeatedly. Remember this man never missed his opportunity. Jesus in his masses, he just pronounced healing upon the man. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Despite the man not seeing the opportunity, and despite him not answering the question as it was supposed to be answered, even just for many of us, whereby we will expect, or rather, we will be expected by God when he comes on our situation and he has brought the opportunity. This was the blind man, by the way, the, inf the, the man with the infirmity. But even for us, we will find ourselves in these situations. Jesus, because of his masses, atakuliza unataka ili njambo litatuliwe. Now, utaanza kufambo, you know, fumbling in ones. But in his masses, he'll just say, receive whatever it is. But now, beyond the masses of God, because Jesus said, rise up and walk. Let's see verse number 38. Because Jesus had seen this man, even before he talked, Jesus came there with a mission to deliver this man. So you see, Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And the man literally walked up and he moved on. But just imagine, were it not for Jesus' mercy, how many years do you think that man could have stayed there? Maybe it is death. Lambda ni kifo kingemtoa pale. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And I have every reason to believe that, that for that eight years, not being able to get into the pool, to get healed, if he missed this opportunity, then he would have been removed there by death, probably. But now for us, this afternoon, I want us to look at this lesson because God is teaching us something that Jesus' mercy disconnected the, lo the loss of opportunity for this man and the man got the opportunity and he got healed. Actually, if you continue with the scripture in uh, chapter number five going down, eh, you will see how the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, how they became contentious about that issue. And they were asking him, what was it? But basically, Jesus wants us to have our opportunities right at the right time. Now, then what is this that makes us miss our opportunity? Just like this man who was going around in words and instead of answering questions, ourselves, we find ourselves in the same, same situation, just like this man. So what are some of the things? Ama, why do we find ourselves meeting, missing opportunities repeatedly? Because brethren, let me share with you this. We really need our opportunities to make a difference in life. Just the same way I was explaining at the beginning, the difference between those who seem to be making impact and those who have not made at all, it is loss of opportunities or catching of opportunities. So, wanting to share, why, why is it that we are always missing opportunities repeatedly, causing that repetitive cycle, like this man? You know, uh, when I was um, listening to God and making this message, you know, I was thinking, if this man started giving Jesus these stories, don't you think, ata wale watu walikuwa nakuja kumbeba, na kumpeleka pare kwa ile kisima, don't you think he was also giving them stories? Bwana asifiwe. You what do you think? Every indication is that he was giving stories, and probably that is why he was being left out. Awa wengine walikuwa na sarenda, wanasema ni mbebe. Uyo lamna likuwa nasema, nishike hivi, eh, usinishike hapa, eh, ngojea kidogo. And then before you realize that the opportunity is gone, but as as you So what, what is this that makes us miss opportunities every time? Something called head knowledge. Head knowledge. I don't know what to call that in Kiswahili. When opportunity presents itself in our lives, sometimes we take too much analysis or we analyze too much. Tunanjaribu kuchambua sana. Jambo limekuja, unona hapa kuna kitu, but instead of embracing it and moving on, you start analyzing so much until we are overtaken by events. Mbwana yesu asifiwe. 
I had knowledge. You know, I had knowledge is ile ile ufahamu ambao tuko nao. You know, the, 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 the knowledge, what we are maybe acquired from books. When something happens, because you know also the things of faith, sometimes they do not make a lot of sense. I guess this man did not know that Jesus will just command and he become well. He was very convinced that Jesus has to take him and put him to the pool. Only to realize that he has just become well without even getting into the pool. So even for us, we will try to analyze an opportunity when it comes with what we know has worked before and what has not worked before. This man was applying his atheist experience at the pool. He was busy applying this to what Jesus had asked him. There was no relationship between his experience and what Jesus was asking. The same case, there will be no relationship between what you have gone through and what God is presenting to you that time. Even if it is not making a lot of sense, brethren, let us take it up. And because we are a believers, I believe we see things that are not seen. Isn't it? So, let us not take a lot of time in analyzing, in using our head knowledge, because it may make us lose opportunity. Maybe this issue that is just about to bypass you, it is an issue you have struggled with like for 50 years. Imagine, some of us 25 years, yet this is an opportunity that is coming, just like this blind man, this, this man with infirmity, and we are just praying around with this opportunity. Imagine if it disappears. Buona esu asifiwe. So, that I had knowledge. Then again, one of, the, one of the reasons why we will not maybe get opportunity or why opportunity will bypass us is not embracing the new. You know, we always need to appreciate that there will always be new ways of doing things as time moves. The times which were there 10 years ago, the times that were there 20 years ago are not the same times we are in. We may not necessarily, and this I want to address to believers, it may not necessarily be seen, see or zambi, but it's a different way of doing things. And we need to embrace this as believers. In that embracing of the new, we realize that that is where our opportunities are. The narratives the man was giving was an evidence that the man did not really think that what Jesus was asking was necessary. He was thinking... Um, you know, I'm thinking this man wanted to paraphrase Jesus' question, and uh, he, would, uh, he was thinking, Jesus should have asked him, why haven't you been made well? You see, if that was the question, then whatever was explaining would have made sense, isn't it? But Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? So we need to embrace new ways of doing things, new ways of handling life. Um... Our, our, our dad bishop was sharing with us here yesterday during cell congress, and he said, during those years of uh, 70s, someone would move from here as a believer, go to Mombasa, and when you go there and you say you are born again, and uh, you get people from nowhere coming to embrace you, because again, things that time were different. Utapata watu, watakutafutia mahali pakuka, watakushugulikia, na utatoka Mombasa ukijua kule kuna wandugu. These days, ebu jaribu kufanya hivo, buwana yesu azifiwe. Why? The times have changed. Many people came in with a different interest, and they are doing it differently. But it does not mean that the gospel is not being propagated. We are still propagating the gospel. But our approach has to be different. So appreciating that we need to embrace new ways on the way we do things. And then we find our opportunities in that. Um, in this, or rather, in this question, the man... Uh, thought that Jesus should have been busy putting a strategy together on how to get him into the pool. Yani, akilizake, the resources, whatever was within him was towards the pool. Everything, his thinking, his talking, his imagination was towards the pool. So, he did not have chance for something not going towards the pool. And he thought that why is in that this man giving the best strategy? You know, ile mbinu ambao ni nzuri sana ya kuingia katika kile kisima. Just see what the man told Jesus. I have no man to put me into the pool. So this statement tells you that this man was not embracing Jesus' question. He was thinking that Jesus' question was misplaced. Only to realize that the solution was in the question. Only the way we realize us as believers that 
the solution is in the new thing which probably we are not embracing. So let us learn to embrace new ways. New ways of doing things, as this man came to see. When Jesus pronounces healing, he just got well without getting into the pool. Circumstances that blind us. Another reason why we miss our opportunities in life, just like this man. Circumstances that blind us. You know, sometimes we go through so much agony in life, so much agony, to me pitia kitu, to me pitia like 20 times, until we believe that things can't change. And I know I'm not alone. I'm sure as you listen to me, you must have had a situation whereby you go through so much, same issue, for so long, so many times, until you are convinced this thing is supposed to be like this. One as if you Imagine every day, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe the angel would come once a day. Let me, let me maybe imagine that. Um, the days, the many days in that eight years, that is 365 th times um, that eight. Those are so many days. So just imagine every day when the angel could come and start the water, the man could go through the same experience and he did not get well. So don't you think that is justified by thinking that this thing is permanent? So the circumstances come and blind us and they, they make us think that these things can never change. In fact, that man had surrendered to the situation. And in fact, at some point he was thinking, now that, that, eight, years are over, that eight years are over and there, is, there has never been no man, then there will never be any man. So what the man resorted into, he resorted into giving people stories. Maybe even those people who came before Jesus, he was very busy telling them, Ata kuna wengine walikuja hapa last week, wakajaribu kuniingiza, wakashindwa. Then Jesus was also in the same category of the stories. Hey, I have no man. You know, the circumstances were such that this man was convinced. He was more than convinced that it cannot change. No wonder Jesus had to use a different route to heal him. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hata nafikiria labda kama ameingizwa kwa ile maji, labda hata alikuwa ameamini hiyo maji haiponyi, maana yake amekuwa hapo, hajapona miaka 38. So you see the circumstances. Na sio kupenda kwetu. That is why we even pray and ask God for revelation and direction. Why? So that God can reveal to us that this thing is not here to stay. It did not matter that this man had been there for that eight years. But the thing is, his time had come. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yeah, that eight years or not that eight years, his time had come. Amen. Let us rise on our feet. So, as I wind up my message, I want us to take time and go before the Lord because we are all coordinate of missing opportunities. We may look at this man and think that this is a story for this man. But imagine these things are happening around us and within us all the time. Every time. Maybe even right now, there are some of us who are just in the verge of losing an opportunity. I don't know in which area, maybe in your employment, maybe in your business, uh, some things are happening and the, a contract is just about to disappear. Maybe there is an interview you have done and the way things have happened is that maybe they are just about to pick someone else, but not because it belongs to someone else, but because it belongs to you. But the circumstances, the things happening around you and within you, you just realize that the opportunity has bypassed you. I want us to cry to the Lord, brethren. Um, you know yourself and you know the situation you are in, let us cry unto the Lord. Let us tell God, oh God, let this opportunity not bypass me in Jesus' name. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you this afternoon. We cry unto you, Lord, because you are God in heaven. That indeed you have, Lord God, created us for a reason and for a purpose. And many a times we find opportunities that present themselves, uh, Lord, unto us. But many times, unknowingly, we find that the opportunities are bypassed us. Oh God, that how these opportunities may not bypass us in Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, this is our cry. This is the cry of our heart, oh daddy. It is in different areas of our life. Lord, you know us. You know us and the, the situation we are in and where we need the opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we cry. We cry unto you. We cry unto you. We ask of your intervention, oh God, that you 
may come, Lord God, and make all things clear for us, that the opportunity may not bypass us. Let not any opportunity bypass us. Let not any opportunities bypass us. Any of these brethren, Lord, who are listening, here or even online, let the opportunities not bypass us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we command, O oh God, that let the opportunities, Lord God, come straight to us. And when they come to us, let us respond. Let us respond. Let us respond appropriately. Let us open our mind. Let us not be blinded by circumstances. Let us, Lord God, Oh, Father, not be surrounded by things that are not clear to us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, opportunities. Let our opportunities not bypass us, Lord. Cause them to come to us. Cause them, Father, to stop at us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listening to you and getting to know, oh God, that you are the one who brings opportunities in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We worship you. The other prayer I would want to make is I would want to pray with any one of us in this sanctuary or maybe watching online. You have not given Jesus an opportunity in your life. Before these opportunities get to you or get your way, the first opportunity you need to get into is accepting Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. That way, you will be able even to realize when your opportunity comes. When you are out of Jesus, many, many, many will bypass you without knowing and you'll never know that you had an opportunity. But when you give Jesus your life as Lord and Savior, let me tell you, my brother, let me tell you, my sister, it becomes easy even to spot our opportunities. Anyone within the sanctuary, you are saying, Jesus, I want to give you my life so that when opportunities come, they don't bypass me, just as it was just about to happen to this man. Amen, amen, amen. Don't fear. This was the, your appointed time. Mungu alijua utakuwa hapa ndio tushiriki ujumbe na hii ujumbe ikufungue macho. Mtu mwingine labda hata kule juu. Oh, there's another brother there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the heavens have stopped because of these brethren and there is celebration it's just even as we celebrate here so as if you mean to celebrate let's celebrate well because even the heaven is celebrating amen and any one of us who could be watching online do the same and even as we pray together with you uh, you who has, have lifted your heart just say this Lord Jesus come into my life I accept you as a Lord and Savior. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I am born again in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because of the brethren who have submitted their lives to you. Indeed, it will become so clear moving forward. Yet there may be challenges of life, but your word is true. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, the old is gone and the new has come. That is your word upon believers. And because this brother and this sister and the many, many who may have done the, who have done the same right now online, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you may sustain them in their salvation. And as they move in their salvation, they will be able to spot the opportunities. They will be able to get the opportunities when it presents itself. And I know that, Lord, this is a guarantee and it is an assurance. Receive every glory and receive every honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for those who have given their lives to Christ, um, here, here there are numbers. Get in touch with those numbers and you'll get someone who will guide you through. Uh, part of the group of team. Yeah, the number is there down. It is more clearer. Pastors will be able to help you and to guide you through this journey of new believer. Thank you very much, you who have given your lives to Christ. Father, this afternoon, we thank you because your message is always clear and simple. Thank you for guiding us, Lord God. And even scripture is showing us that opportunities will most of the time present themselves, but we miss. But because of your grace, you always intervene and make sure that we do not lose them. 
But at the same time, Lord, we know that at times we are in confusion and mix up and opportunities come and pass repeatedly. Oh God, help us as believers. Help the people of the world that we may be able to take advantage of the opportunity and run with it and bring all the difference we need to bring in this life. You have a purpose for us. You have a reason why we are created. And the minute we lose those opportunities, Lord, it is showing that our purpose is getting down the drain. It is getting further wasted in Jesus' mighty name. So praying for upon every brother, agreeing with every sister, that from today, we are a different people. We will make use of opportunities. We will take and run with them and bring all the difference we are supposed to bring in our life. Father, receive every glory and receive every honor. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.